give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Let's seriously, good Madonna. <laughs> Make your proof. I must catechize you for it, Madonna. Good, my mouse of virtue. Answer me. Well, sir, for want of other idleness, I'll buy to your proof. Good, Madonna. Why mournest thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. I'm all for you, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away, fool, gentlemen. <laughs> what think you of that, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity, that's the case, the wise doth ever make the better fool. Well, God send you, madam, a speedy infirmity for the better increasing your folly. Sir Toby will be sworn that I am no fox, but he will not pass his word for tuppence that you are no fool. <coughs> what say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day by an ordinary fool who has no more brain than a stone. Look ye here, he's out of his guard already. If we do not laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. I protest, I take these wise men that crow so at this set kind of fools, no better than the fools they need. And you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste for the distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and of free disposition, to take those things of bad bulk that you deem cannibal it. There is no slander in an allowed fool, though he do nothing but rail, nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. Well, Mercury, and do thee the believing, thou speakest well of fool. Madame, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desired to speak with you. From the Count Rossino, is it? I know not, Madame. Tis a fair young man, and well attended. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, Madame, your king, sir. Fetch him off, I pray you, he speak nothing but madmen. Fine on him. Go you, Malvolio, if it be a suit from the count, and sick or not at home, what you will to dismiss it. Now, you see, sir, how your fooling grows old, and people dislike it. Thou hast spoke forth, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool, whose skull drove crown with brains, for here he comes. One of thy kin has the most weak peer matter. By my honour, how drunk! What is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman! <laughs> a gentleman? <coughs> what a gentleman? Tis a gentleman here! Oh, <laughs> a plague on this pickled herring! How oh, now, Salt? Good, Sir Toby. Cousin, cousin! <laughs> How have you come so early by this lethargy? Lethargy? I defy lethargy! There's one at the gate. I marry. What is he? Let him be the devil and he will. I care not. Oh, give me faith, say I. Well, it's all one. <laughs> what is he? What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One drowns about he's making him a fool, the second mads him, and the third drowns him. Get out to the crowner and let him sit on my cuffs, for he is in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. Go look after him. He is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes it on himself to understand so much, and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of this too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, madam? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. <coughs> He's being told so. He says he'll stand at your gate like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench, but he'll speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why of mankind? What manner of man? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? Of what personage and years is he? He is not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. He is like a squash before tis a peascod, 
uh, coddling before it is an apple. He is in standing water between boy and man. He is very well favoured and he speaks <coughs> very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman, my lady calls. Come, give me my veil. Throw it over my face. Or once more here, we'll see no embassy. The Honourable Lady of the House? Which is she? Speak to me. I shall answer for her. Your will? Most <laughs> radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. I pray you, tell her to see the name of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to have to bring my speech. But besides, it is excellent on hand. I have taken great pains to con it. When came you, sir? I can say a little more than I have studied, and that questions out of my part. Good gentle one, give me modest assurance that you be the lady of the house, and I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my grand heart. And yet, by the very sound of malice, I swear I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain. If you are she, you do usurp yourself. For what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will offer my speech in your praise and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important, and I forgive you the praise. And that is a great pain to study it. Tis the them all like to be feigned. I pray you, keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gate, and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not that time in moon with me to have one in so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No good swallow. I've got hull here a little longer. Some modification. For your giant sweet lady. Tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are full of peace and matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness. That had appeared to me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are a secret of maidenhead to your ears, divinity, to any other's profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. <laughs> now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsina's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method in the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. <laughs> have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my fate? You are out of your text, but... We will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. Tis not well done. Excellently done, if God did all. Tis in grain, sir, twill endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blessed. This red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive. If you will leave these graces to the graves and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard hearted. I will send out divers schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventories with every particle and utensil labelled to my will. As item two, lips indifferent red. Item two, <coughs> grey eyes with lids on them. Item one, neck, one chin, and so forth. For you sent hither to praise me. I see what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loved you. Oh, such love could be but recompense. So you crowned an armpit of beauty. How does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, 
It's a grand that stand alive beside the fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose some virtuous know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, in voices well divulged, free, learned of valiant, in, in a dimension and shape of nature, a gracious person. But I cannot love him. He should have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's name, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willing cat.